I've been so looking forward to getting my greasy mitts on one of Heritage Audio's i73 audio interfaces, and it was only a matter of time, right? And now I have. These are one of only a few audio interfaces out there with transformer-based preamps, so I really want to get to the core of what the i73 series is about. Who's it for? Does it sound as great as you'd expect? How's the workflow? How about the DSP side of things? I'm gonna test it in every way I can so that I can really understand it and then recommend it or not. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can skip to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could take the time to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It puts a smile on my face, helps the channel and uh, I just thank you in advance. Now I'm not holding it in my hands right now because I'm using it, you're actually hearing it right now and everything in this video is gonna be recorded through that so you know, that's just so you're aware. Also, Heritage Audio uh, sent this to me on loan just to kind of try out. Uh, I can say what I like, they don't get to see the video, and then of course I have to, you know, begrudgingly send it back. So just a, a heads up to let you know. Let's dig in. Kicking off with the features, and the version I'm trying today is the i73 II Pro, which sits squarely in the middle of the i73 range. In terms of inputs and outputs, it has two in, four out, of which the inputs have two full-fat Class A transformer-based preamps. Now this is clearly the headline feature of this range. Of course you will have noticed these two huge green blobs, and they're not buttons, but transformers. I've seen some people say, why did Heritage Audio do that? And I think it's the preamp equivalent of having, you know, one of those muscle cars with the engine kind of bulging out the top of the bonnet. And it's just kind of weirdly decadent. I think, why not? I love it. The 1073 style preamps are still hugely popular. You get masses of gain up to 70 dB. And given that it's got both a gain and an output knob, just like on the proper Neve 1073 preamp units, it allows you to drive the transformers to add saturation, and then you can back the output down to a workable level. And how awesome is that on a desktop audio interface? Honestly. The four outs are the left and right to your monitors, and then a stereo headphone out. And I'd say the headphone amp seems to be really good, certainly more beefy than the ones in my Solid State Logic SSL12. It's worth noting that the ins and outs are not expandable until you get to the top of the range i73 Pro Edge version. You get independent pads and phantom power on both channels, which a shocking amount of multi-channel audio interfaces just don't have. These are pretty essential, so I'm not considering these pros because they should have them but I am glad that Heritage Audio didn't skimp here. However, there's no low cut filters and there's no inserts and I think I understand why. With the move to people using less and less hardware, outboard gear and more software, the decision to exclude these things makes much more sense. I'm sure Heritage Audio's intention is for people to use their DSP tools that you get free with these units as virtual inserts. For example, the lack of low cut filters can be easily fixed by adding an instance of the Britstrip plugin, which by the way is fantastic. I actually own the hardware version of the Britstrip and I love it, I reviewed it before. I definitely recommend if you're into Heritage Audio gear, Definitely watch my review, I will uh, link it below and um, definitely check that one out. However, you know, having looked at them and compared them, the, the software version seems really quite legit, really quite close. Speaking of the DSP tools that you get, let me show you what's included. First we have this small recording amp, which is clearly a small Fender amp kind of thing. <laughs> It's really not my style. To me, this sounds just super kind of dry and DI-ish, not to my taste, compared to my not quite full gain preset on my favorite amp sin. And then my crackle preset, which is the higher gain version. Thank you. 
And then we have this HA15 Pro, which as I understand is primarily a bass amp, but has guitar amp presets. <laughs> As you can see, I wasn't mad about this one either. And then using the HO15 for its intended use as a bass amp, I quite like this. And then versus the Neural DSP Microtubes B7K Ultra Dark Glass plugin. You also get a gold foil verb and tape saturator plugin. And I feel like this video is going to end up really long if I test these as well. But I will say I was really quite impressed with both of them. The DI is Heritage Audio's fantastic. JFET design, of course you were just hearing it, and it's the same one found in the Brit Strip. It sounds great and I love it. As for the power options, it's mains only, and I'm sure some will be disappointed that it's not bus powered, but keep in mind we've got beefy Class A preamps to power. As for the AD conversion side of things, it doesn't get a lot better. You know, recording, uh, mixing, and playback is, um, is all at up to 32 bit and uh, 192 kilohertz, so you know, what's not to like. Next on to build quality, and this is a professional bit of kit, and I love how solid it feels. It's got a solid metal chassis, knobs and buttons that are as high quality as you'd find on any high-end rack unit. Not that it has any bearing on my final opinion of this, but I also love the look of it. The wooden effect side panels are obviously not solid wood to the touch, but I don't really care, they still look cool. A purely aesthetic minor niggle that I noticed is that the chassis and the side panels don't follow the same lines at the front and the top. I just think it would have looked better if the chassis and side panels felt like they belong together a little more. But yeah, other than that, really that covers the build quality side of things. This is a um, pro rugged feeling bit of gear that should last you a long time. Moving on to the user experience side of things, and I'd say that my experience so far has been uh, pretty great. It's, um, it's lovely to use. I would say it's not perhaps quite as uh, intuitive to use as something like my SSL 12, but for the target audience of prosumer buyers and professionals wanting a small setup, this is going to be a joy to use, I'm sure. The Heritage DSP side of things and the software was actually a bigger part of the experience than I was expecting. The i73 Mixer software is an essential download as it unlocks the full hybrid functionality of this range. You heard the amp sims already. I wasn't massively into them, as you know, as you can kind of gather, but um, that's just you know personal preference and. Um, you know, the others I thought were pretty good, with the exception of one which was exceptional, and that, of course, is the Britstrip plugin. I really rate it. It's really nice that you can record both wet and dry versions of your audio. And this is really great for using the Britstrip plugin for adding EQ and compression on the way in. Check it out. So I thought a comparison might be quite fun, seeing as I own the hardware version of the Heritage Audio Britstrip. And my signal chain at the moment is I'm going from uh, going through this uh, WA47 mic tube microphone from Warm Audio into my Brit strip, and I'm using the preamp, the EQ, and the compression. And I want to see how close, if I replicate those settings within the plugin version, how close they are. And I'll tell you what, I'll do a screenshot of the plugin because that'll be easier to see right here, and um, that'll tell you what I'm doing on the uh, hardware version. And let's just see, shall we? Let's swap now. So then this is what it sounds like going through the i73 to Pro and the Britstrip plugin. And again, I'll flash the uh, the settings on screen. And um, just from my initial listening and just looking at the, the levels, it does seem to be slightly hotter. And um, that's not a negative thing at all. It's just um, a difference. And um, 
really shouldn't affect the, the sound quality, I don't think. Um, they are likely to be similar. Uh, when I first tested this, I did note that um, the Britstrip plugin was actually really good sounding and, um, and compared very well. But you tell me, is, is it good? Is it close? Just a couple of user experience negatives to speak of. Firstly, there's no real way to know what the monitor and uh, headphone volumes are set to without looking at the i73 mixer software as their infinite rotary encoder style knobs. Also, the i73 software seems to need restarting quite often, certainly if anything changes with your I.O. or recording settings. It's not a massive deal, but it happened enough uh, for me to notice. Anyway, next, moving on to value for money, and there aren't a huge amount I can compare these two because, you know, it's, it's a fairly unique product, but, um, but let's see. The obvious alternative would be Heritage Audio's i73 Pro Edge. Yes, it is an extra chunk of change, but it basically has everything that the i73 II Pro is missing, arguably, including two extra line inputs, two stereo monitor outputs, two headphone outs, Plus, you can connect eight additional channels via ADAT, which is a biggie. These features will be must-haves for so many people, and in my opinion, the Edge is well worth the extra cost. Then there's the Neve 88M, and I like Neve, despite my feeling that their gear is just kind of overpriced on the whole, but in good conscience, I can't recommend the 88M. Yes, you get the Neve 88 preamps, which, whilst nice, are arguably less desirable than the 73s style pre's, but I'd also argue it's missing too many features, which really plays into that kind of narrative of the gear being a little bloated on the price side of things. And just to mention a couple of things, there's no software with it, meaning if you expand with ADAT, there's no way to monitor things outside of your DAW. Unlike the i73 series, it's only bus powered with no external power option. And guys, can we just have both? Just give us both options so we can choose. That would be nice. And then finally, um, the thing that everyone says is the DIs are really hot, which is um, a real no-no for anyone who, uh, like me, I you know play guitar through an interface. Um, and the other thing that it's missing, which is really weird, is pads, no pads at all. So some pretty big fails there. There are, of course, plenty of audio interfaces that do a pretty convincing job of having a, a kind of emulated DSP color from preamps that you know they can they can add in there's actually too many to mention and um i actually think there there are some good options in there but that's a subject for another video anyway now on to my pros and cons and i'll start with the pros because i'm a glass half full kind of guy you get transformer based preamps what's not to like about that I really like the sound of the headphone amp. It's nice and beefy and dynamic sounding. The build quality is amazing. It makes other audio interfaces seem plasticky in comparison. I had a great time using it. I had a lovely user experience. It feels like the professional piece of gear that it is. There's some good software included, especially that Brit strip. It's great. I actually think this is incredible value for money, despite it being a non-budget price for a two-channel interface. And then the cons, and it's mains only, which I suppose makes sense. But if the Neve 88M can be bus powered, then I wonder why this can't. There are no inserts, but I would argue this is the way things are going. Plus, if inserts are what you're looking for, why are you shopping in the desktop interface category? Gotta get something beefier, man. There's no hardware low cut switch, but the DSP options fix this. The IO is not expandable on the i73 Pro or the entry level i73. However, there's the Pro Edge version if you want this. The DSP amps are not to my taste. There's no option to use impulse responses, which for me is essential. Finally, to my opinion, and Heritage Audio have 
clearly done an amazing job with these series of interfaces. Historically, I'm not a, a preamp guy. I'm someone that I would rather change a microphone, move a microphone, use a different instrument, I don't know, anything else to, you know, to affect tone. But I do admit, you know, given the choice of preamp, I would always opt for one with, you know, big transformers, so hypocrite much. Whilst I've loved using the i73 II Pro, if it were my money in my hand, I think I would opt for the Pro Edge version, and that's just because of all the extra functionality you get with it, and especially the expandable I.O. But you know what? I actually think that the i73 II Pro is the sweet spot for value in the range. Just think about what you get for a second. You know, UK pounds, it's uh, it's 869 pounds at the time of filming. And for that, you get two channels of 73 style preamps with AD conversion, not to mention all of the DSP stuff. That's unbelievable. That works out at 434 pounds per channel and you know, and I mentioned the DSP side of things, you know, that includes the amazing Britstrip plugin, which, you know, I own the real thing, it cost me 1500 quid. So <laughs> consider that. And, and then there's the build quality side of things, which is just pretty professional. And then the lovely user experience is stunning value. So I will be sad to see the i73 II Pro go, kind of. And that's only, I only say that because um, with my current setup that I have, SSL 12 interface into a Heritage Audio Britstrip, I've got flexibility far beyond what the i73 II Pro can offer. Huge features from the SSL 12 with its expandable I.O. via ADAT, and then having a separate preamp uh, gives me the option to use inserts without any issue. And then, of course, having the Britstrip, I've got analog EQ, analog compression, and those are just lovely things. It's really not an equal or fair comparison in any way, but you know what? I The i73 series wasn't out when I bought that chain, and had it been, it would have been a much more difficult decision. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do ask me questions about it down below. Do you agree with this review? What did I miss? Definitely know, let me know your thoughts and I'll be down in the comments section as much as I can. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.